I'm Tim Herrera with the Sacramento County Office of Education here with another Teacher of the Year profile. We're speaking with Lisa McMillan, who is the Teacher of the Year for the Natomas Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. So tell us about yourself. Tell us um, your school and, and tell us what you teach. Well, <clears throat> I'm a first grade teacher at Heron School in the Natomas Unified School District. It is the second most diverse district in the nation, actually. Um, and I've been there at Heron for the past five years. Before starting at Heron, I taught as a secondary teacher in the district, um, as an English teacher. And so I made my transition from teaching seniors, senior English to um, first grade. <laughs> it was a pretty big leap. It's a leap. big jump. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's what I wanted. I was excited to make the change. Um, and I miss teaching English, but um, but it's been a, it's been great. It's been a lot of fun. So, how was that transition going from twelfth graders to first graders? It was like I said, I wanted it, <laughs> but it was kind of scary. And I had other teachers kind of teasing me, <laughs> saying like, "You're sure you want to do this?" And I I um, signed up. I had to interview for the one two combo, and then um, I guess quite a few teachers aren't as interested in teaching combo classes, <laughs> but I was just really interested in that grade level for, for something different. I, um, I loved being an English teacher, but I started when I was really young, so I knew I had a long time left to my career, and I just wanted a new challenge. Um, so it was kind of nerve-wracking, but it's just gone so well, and it's been such a joy to see the other end of it. You know, as an English teacher, I was helping them, you know, analyze Shakespeare and do all this literary analysis and write essays. And now I'm here at the other end teaching them how to read. It's just mm -hmm. so rewarding. And how to read and how to write sentences. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah. yeah. Well, and math. You know, it's strange <laughs> that I'm teaching math. You know, I did not really set out to do that, but it's been great. And it's been um, a true reward teaching so many kids in the community in which I live. I've taught about over 2,300 kids where I live, and it's just it's neat. And you had mentioned that your district is quite diverse. So mm -hmm. what's that like being in a district where there's just so many different kinds of folks? Oh, it's awesome. In fact, that's why I love living there. Um, and I'm, I have a lot of fun uh, going on home visits to visit my students' families and them. Um, this past year, my home visits focused on teaching an app called Book Creator App, and I'd help the kids, you know, create these little stories, and it can involve video and pictures and different things like that. Um, they kind of didn't realize that they were learning something while I was over there visiting, but but then it was also to just to get to know their families and um, understand kind of where they're coming from, and just a way to connect more with with my students and their families. So obviously with doing home visits you are connecting quite a bit with the families. Kind of explain the home visit process, how it works, and, and, and the value of it. I do. I start my home visits uh, um, really over that winter break um, and they continue for the rest of the school year. Um, they have different focuses. Like I said, this last one was about this book creator app. Mm -hmm. But the idea is just to go and have a little bit of a teaching moment, but it's really casual, and to get to know my students and their families better. I also do, during the summer, I do um, home visits, like tutoring home visits, uh, to help some of the kids that maybe need just a little bit more practice before they go off into second grade. Um, so I've been having fun doing that this summer. Um, and those are just two different ways to, I don't know, give back to the community and reach out to my families a little bit more. I have a lot of parent volunteers that come in too. So those are kind of some of the ways that I try to give back, not just to get to know them better, but also to give back those um, free tutoring services and. One summer, I tried to uh, teach reading lessons at 4th R, you know, those after-school programs, and they have them going on during the summer as well. And it was the one that's at my site, like my classroom is a few doors down, and I had to go through this whole thing where they had to fingerprint me, <laughs> and, <laughs> and um, I went through an interview process, and uh, 
they let me volunteer. And it was, it was interesting, but I think I preferred uh, doing the home visits, the summer tutoring home visits instead, because it was so a little bit that, more one-on-one. -on -one. How does that establish a really good relationship with the families and, and build more trust? Um, <clears throat> they just get to know me in a more casual, personal way. And I do feel strongly that one of the best things that we could do for our kids is to involve their whole family with the educational process and having that connection with them goes such a long ways in ensuring their academic success. Um, but I just, I enjoy it. I really like the, pe I, I enjoy my families and my students and it's fun to not just be talking about academics, you know, and to just get to hang out with the kids and their families. And they and see you as a real person, mm -hmm, rather yeah. than just the teacher. Yeah, and because I do live there, it's not just home visits, you know, pretty much anywhere I go, I'll go to the market and I'll see tons of students I taught, you know, or I might run into a parent and we'll have an impromptu little parent-teacher conference in the grocery store aisle or, you know, poolside, <laughs> you know, so. It's nice. I like that. It feels a little bit more like I live in a small town. So you've taught 12th grade, you've taught first grade. Uh, in dealing with motivating students, is it still the same as to how to motivate a student or is it something different for an older student compared to a, a really young one? There are some common themes, but I think motivating older kids can be trickier because they've been in our system longer and while we try to meet everybody's individual needs, and I really pride myself on that, it doesn't always happen for each individual. And so some kids, I think, are a little bit burned out by the process or let down. And so I think as they get older, it can be harder to engage them and um, make them want to learn. Um, but the things that are common within uh, both levels, pretty much if you love what you do and you're enthusiastic about it, and I kind of have some wacky approaches, it, it could kind of hook kids at, at any age, and that's what I have found to be most okay, successful. Okay, wacky approach, I can't let that go. <laughs> like well, um, I just, I don't know, I can't, I, for, so for grade school, I'm really, um, kind of I have a kinesthetic approach where it's whole body response and I'll develop strange little sign language, uh, you know, signs, uh, cues, and um, they could either help with instruction or give little character reminders. And um, I don't know, I've been known to do strange things with iPads and Apple TVs. I, I once, um, to teach a math concept, I roped up about 10 of my students and they they held this yarn around them to show that that was one group of 10 and then I had my other separate group here that were 10 ones you know and then we we took pictures of that and put it up on the you know Apple TV and stuff like that I've turned some of my students into animated cartoons and put them on my website so that they can offer math challenges um, this year I taught them an app smashing technique where they videotaped oh, some facts that they had learned about an animal that they were researching. And then we used the green screen and um, uh, a specific app that were, when they were being filmed, it looked like the kid who was giving the facts about lions had a moving lion behind him, a, li a real live lion behind him. So, you know, just silly things like that to engage. Again, to engage them and to make learning fun and, I, and really try to introduce a lot of STEM concepts. That's a, another thing that I'm really interested in. So what's it mean to you to be named a Teacher of the Year? I, I've just been really honored and <laughs> I, um, I don't know, kind of humbled. I am very lucky to work with extremely gifted educators. And I think they all stand out so much in their own specific ways that it's just gone a long ways in helping me to improve my own practice. Um, so in some ways, it feels strange, <laughs> you know, being singled out. But it's a huge honor. And I, um, I just am really lucky to work where I do and live where I do. 
Well, congratulations to you. Thank We've been speaking you. with Lisa McMillan, who is the Teacher of the Year for the Natomas Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much.